Hello again, Steven here and uh, welcome to the second episode of this Driving a Tesla 101 series. Um, in the previous video, which you can find here, I uh, actually explained why it can be that your supercharging speed is slow. And uh, in that video I called the supercharger a transformer, which was not entirely accurate. So, but I wanted to keep it simple at that point. But today we're going to do a deep dive into the nitty gritty details of what exactly a supercharger is and which components are involved. Now before we get started, uh, please keep one thing in mind and that this explanation is for the European superchargers. So it might be that the setup for the superchargers in the US or in China or uh, anywhere else in the world is slightly different from this setup. Now first I want to give the high level overview of uh, how the power gets to the supercharger. So we start with this overview here, uh, which you see on the screen where we have the European high voltage transmission grid. So most of that is uh, actually a 380 kilovolt uh, grid, which on supercharger level we can't handle. So between uh, this grid and uh, the transformer cabin that is located at supercharger sites, there are um, one or more other transformer houses uh, that are transforming it down to uh, the level of 20k or 12k altogether. Now that uh, 20k, 25k, there are different levels uh, depending on what area you're in, but those uh, are kind of mid-range uh, power lines. They often go underground as well in, uh, in Europe, uh, but sometimes they are uh, above the ground as well on these uh, telephone poles uh, or something that looks like a telephone pole as well um, but that's mostly in older regions now this is the industrial use uh, that is coming in and then you have uh, a transformer cabin that is on the supercharger location um, and it depends on uh, where it is located and on which power line it is uh, tapping into uh, so for example you have this one here which is a uh, 15,000 volt input right? and uh, that one is in uh, Arcelor near Antwerp for example and then the other one which is uh, in Lokeren uh, which is close to me uh, that one actually goes uh, or gets 12,000 volts so that's a different kind of line that, that comes in but that's how the power gets to the supercharger. Now the transformer uses that uh, high voltage and transforms that down into something that the supercharger can use. Now in our case that is a three phase uh, connection that is coming in uh, and is going out to the supercharger as well. Now if you look at the label on the supercharger then we see that the input current um, is 192 amps. So that's uh, quite a bit of power that is going in there and uh, it is a 400 volt system but it is rated for 380 to 480 volts because of possible fluctuations on the net of course. Uh, the output voltage that is uh, 400 volts usually and around 300 amps if you're fully charging at 120 kilowatts. Now the supercharger itself can handle a 330 amp at 4, 480 volts. So that means that in theory the supercharger could handle 158 kilowatts. Right? But that's what the components are rated for. It's not necessarily what the supercharger will actually be able to deliver at some point in the future. I think there are more components involved uh, that need to be changed for a supercharger to be able to charge up to let's say 150 kilowatts or to deliver up to 150 kilowatts over two stalls. Now the supercharger cabinets which you see on this picture here they actually consist out of 12 chargers and those chargers inside which you can see here on this picture uh, combined with a lot of electronics and cooling stuff 
um, those chargers are actually the same as the ones that are in the Model S and the Model X. Right? So we got 12 times the Model S and the Model X chargers that are converting the raw AC power, so the alternating current, into DC power, which is uh, direct current, which is going straight into the battery. Um, when I found, first found out about this, uh, I thought it was really funny that uh, they actually use the same chargers. Now, these chargers are uh, rated at about, in this case, uh, where you have a 135 kilowatt supercharger, at about 11 kilowatts. Now, since these are exactly the same chargers as you have in the Model S and the Model X, potentially they might up this to 16.5 kilowatts. Um, that would generate a supercharger of 198 kilowatts. Um, that would be awesome, but uh, I think there is more involved here than just uh, upping that charge. A lot more heat, uh, different cooling system maybe that's needed, uh, different components that are interconnecting the chargers, for example. So yeah, that, that is just a theoretical approach, right? Now, those chargers are actually divided up in two blocks of three. So per tree they form one block. So you have a block of about 33 kilowatts. And once uh, you have this division, then those blocks get turned on or turned off, uh, depending on uh, the supercharger, depending on the usage or of one or both stalls, uh, because those four blocks are divided over both stalls. And uh, depending on the temperature of a battery, of course, and the state of charge of your battery and everything that I've discussed uh, in the previous video. Now, what really happens uh, in the background is that if you come to a supercharger and the stalls are uh, shared, right, across one supercharger, um, the stall that, or the, the, the guy that arrives uh, the latest on the second stall, that one gets at least one block. So you get at least three chargers assigned to the second stall, right? Now, why do you sometimes see that it's only charging on 20 kilowatts? Because it's not fully used, because the car is limiting that uh, based on software and parameters uh, of temperature, state of charge, all those kind of things. So that means if you're charging, if you're the first at a supercharger, you get all four blocks, right? And then uh, that is limited to 120 kilowatts. Now, if the second guy pulls up to the uh, charger, then he will get assigned that first block uh, if you're still charging at or around 120 kilowatts. And you will go down with one block. So you still keep around 100 kilowatts uh, in this case. And then uh, the, the other guy gets the 33 remaining kilowatts. As soon as your charge starts to drop, then uh, his charge rate will go up because he will get assigned a second block which will gradually come into play um, and they get switched on and off depending on your state of charge assuming that both batteries are warm and uh, are at low state of charge to start with for example now the example that i'm giving here is uh, basically for the 135 kilowatt chargers there are some older 90 kilowatt uh, superchargers uh, still in Europe um, I, I don't think there are many but there are a few left or right but you also have uh, the 145 kilowatt chargers which means that the chargers inside the supercharger cabinet right they are uh, actually rated then at 12 kilowatts so now you know what the supercharger is which components are involved and how the load balancing and all that kind of stuff actually works. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you do, please like it and subscribe to the channel using that button over there. And uh, don't forget to click that little bell icon so you don't miss out on any new videos because I will continue to do uh, these one-on-one videos uh, for all the new EV drivers and especially the new Tesla drivers that are coming along in the next few weeks and months. So um, yeah, hope you enjoyed it and uh, see you guys next time. Bye-bye.